It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. Is it really okay to be wrong? Now, a lot of times we're thinking on a moral compass of right and wrong, and we get focused on that is wrong morally, and so we have to really assert ourselves. But in many cases, the wrongs that we're dealing with are not that. They're just mere opinions, thoughts, and concepts. For instance, you should not wear white after Labor Day. People want to make that a moral compass and make people feel really guilty and bad about that. And you may be thinking, well, that is true. But again, right and wrong on a moral compass is different than just right and wrong on things, choices, decisions. Okay? I may choose one job over another. What if the job I choose turns out sour? We go on and on and on about making the wrong choice. And how horrible that was. And then the next time we have to make a choice on a job, we're going to agonize over it. So then we create this pattern. So we're going to look at wrong, that it's okay to be wrong. It is okay to be wronged. Oh my, it's something. It's no, it is not okay for someone to wrong us. Okay, what we're going to learn is, is that we can determine how we look at things. We can decide how we're going to assign those situations, the words, the concepts. And when we know that we can decide that, we get to choose how we use it. Is that not what everyone always says? It's not other people you can control, but you can control your response. Well, this is what I'm teaching you to do. This is what I'm sharing and what I have learned to do, how to control your response without trying to force yourself to control your response but make it so that your response is a natural one that is just who you are. So we're going to look at this like this. You're walking down the street and someone bumps into you. Just just a stranger. You know, it's just an accident, a little bump. Oh, you both look at each other. Oh, sorry. And you move on. Okay. This is how we want to look at many of the things in life. That it's just happened and we're not going to lay down Start having a hissy fit, going on and on and on and on and on and on about it for days and weeks and months until we've exhausted ourselves emotionally and then we get up and decide to move on. We get to decide if that's what we wish to do. I personally have learned to be able to do that little bump and keep going. Sometimes not even registering the little bump as a problem, but it's just saying, oh, excuse me, maybe even taking it on myself because it's okay. So we're going to look at being wronged, wronged, wrong, wrong, wrong. What, what bothers you about wrong? When someone says you're wrong, what does that make you feel? Is that making you feel you're a failure? Does it make you feel that you're not right? Does it make you feel that you can't do anything right? You're going to look at that word wrong and let's change it. Do you want to look at it in the way of, oh, now I get to choose another option next time. That's what I do. I think, oh, that didn't turn out the way I expected. I'm going to choose another option next time. I'm not going to say, oh, that didn't turn out right. I never make good choices. Everything I choose to do doesn't come out right. I'm such a failure. No, 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 no. I am not going to do that. Why? Because I trained my brain not to do that. I trained it to react the other way. So what do you do when you have all of these past experiences that are yelling at you that you're wrong, it's your failure? Maybe you hear your mom, your dad. Maybe you see your, hear your coworkers. Maybe you hear your boss. Maybe you hear your teacher telling you all of these things. Oh, you know what you need to do, the three-step thought process. That's what I'm all about. Three-step thought process takes all of the experiences and any low vibe emotions that are attached to it in an unhealthy way, and it breaks it. So that's what you can do. The other thing you can do is you can actually just think about wrong and what wrong means to you. So you would say, wrong means to me, blah, 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 blah. When I do this and I'm wrong, this is how I feel. Then you're just going to take a deep breath. You're going to distract your mind. And you know what? I say dance and music is like the best thing ever because why? It re-engages your mind. It takes coordination. It really gets you feeling. That's what step two and three about is about re-engaging the mind and feeling. So when you do this and you just 
getting into your groove, you're going to hold it and you're going to feel it and you're just going to love it to death. And then what do you do? After about a minute, or if you want to do the whole song, that's just fine. Just take your deep breath and look back and say, I don't like being wrong. Wrong means this to me. Wrong is so bad because of this. Then what you're going to do is go back to another great, fabulous song. And you're just going to get into it and get into it and get into it and feel it. Take a deep breath when you're done with it. You should have just worked it out. And look back and say, what is wrong? I'm a wrong person. What does that mean? And you're going to notice that each time you talk about wrong, the intensity of what it meant to you shall start to decrease. Why is that a good thing? You're thinking, well, you know, it's good to know when you're wrong so you can make changes. Well, think about it. The way you've been doing it lately, does it make it easy for you to make changes when you keep a high emotion of failure, not good? Oh, I have to be perfect and make sure I make the right choice. Has that borne the fruitage that you want in your life? Has it made it easy for you to continue going forward in life? Now, if it hasn't, then you may want to reconstruct how you are using wrong. You need to understand that with us, all emotions are good and they have all a purpose. All those low vibe emotions, resentment, anger, they're just little sounding alarms, little sounding alarms that tell us, hey, there's something not right. You need to take action. Now, in the past, we may have been using it as, oh, this is wrong. I'm so mad. And we're going to call up every Tom, Dick, and Harry friend of ours. And we're going to talk for hours. And then we're going to lead into how mad this is making us. And we're going to keep it for days and weeks. And we never take any action. It just keeps repeating. That is a unuseful use of that low vibe telling us there's something wrong. It should actually help us to alert us. This is a problem. Let's take action, resolve it, move forward. That is the way low vibe emotions have been useful in my life now. When I choose not to just verbalize and talk about and, and create great scenario stories to entertain people about how wrong something had been, now I recognize that that wasn't very useful. It just kept pattern continuing. So what do I do now? I said, oh, that looks like there's something I need to handle. And is it an ugly emotion? No, it's just an awareness. It's like, hey, I did something and it is unappreciated. Do I get mad, angry? No, it's just, oh, what do I need to do to change that so that's not continuing to happen? Didn't know you could do that. Did not know you could do it. I always had a reaction a defensive reaction, or I had to show how angry or how wrong they were. And it was done by my tone and my face and my expression in ways I didn't even really know that I was doing. But once I realized that, that is what I started working on. And I'm actually done really good progress with it. It's, I, I'm really good progress with it. I'm quite happy with myself. There's little cleanup things that I think I still am um, going to be doing, um, but I don't force myself. All I do is I keep going in my head when I see that maybe I reacted not quite in the way I want it. And I sit there and say, this was my reaction. I accept it. I reacted this way because it made me feel blah, blah, blah. And then I what go distract myself. I always use music, listen to my jams. Then I go back up. Oh, I see I didn't re like the way I reacted to that, but it's okay. Why did I react that way? I do the three step thought process on everything. So you can do it by actually looking at what you did and bring it down or just looking at the feeling, the emotion. Do you have to feel so wrong? Do you have to feel failure? What does failure mean to you? For many people, failure has led to them making great discoveries because as they failed, it fixed out what couldn't happen until they found the right combination, okay? So it's all about how we look at it. And that's what I love sharing, how we can really look to see how what we're thinking is affecting what we choose to do, say, and feel in our lives. 
So I hope that is helpful about it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wronged. Because remember, we're dealing with the subconscious. And the subconscious doesn't know rhyme and reason, doesn't know right or wrong. All we got to do is let the subconscious know that, okay, that happened. We don't like it. You can change it and move on. We don't have a hissy fit. We don't lay on the ground. We don't get depressed and sad for weeks and months and just can't get out of bed. That is the pattern of the past. We're going to do a new pattern. When we're wrong, we're like, okay, yep, yeah, I don't like it. And then we're going to what? Take action to make sure that that action or that thought or said is not repeated in our lives. Now, how you do that is up to you. You may decide this is a person that doesn't need to be in your life. And so you'll choose to separate yourself from that type of interaction with that person. Or maybe you'll choose to actually say, well, okay, it's not going to kill me. I can live through it. I love this person so much. I'm not even going to look at it as even an issue. I'm just going to let it go and love this person because I'm sure I wronged someone and I didn't mean it. And so that's how you're going to choose on what you're going to do. You're going to look as what I do. I look at three things when my brain doesn't automatically do it. My brain automatically will assume the best. It'll look to see how to make good from it or to keep the big picture in mind. That's what I train my brain to do. And you can too. And when it doesn't do that automatically for me, then I can choose to manually say, okay, I'm going to look at the situation. I'm going to see what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to see what high vibe I could put it in. I'm going to take it out of, out of, uh, anger. I'm going to take it out of grief. I'm going to take it out of regret and I'm going to drop it into that high vibe and try to see how to make something from it. Peace, love, joy, willingness, acceptance, courage, neutral. Yeah, it's good. So thank you. I love that you're following me and I hope you can see how you can look at being wrong or being wrong yourself.